Thank you very much, Oscar, for playing anointing for us here on Pentecost Sunday, the day in which the whole of God's people are anointed with the Holy Spirit in that room on that day. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. James Presbyterian Church on the corner of 141st Street and St. Nicholas Avenue here in the village of Harlem in the city of New York where we have come today to worship and we welcome those of you who are online with us, those of you who are in the sanctuary with us. Our bulletins are still being printed out, so you'll have those in just a moment. And our liturgist is ruling elder Andrea Bradford today, and she joins us online from Alabama. So if, if it's at any time you cannot hear ruling elder Andrea Bradford as she's reading the liturgy, feel free to move forward a little bit. We have plenty of space in our sanctuary to be <laughs> Uh, socially distant, so we welcome all of you to join us and to be a part of this worship service. So let us still our hearts and minds. Here at St. James Presbyterian Church, we call upon the Holy Spirit and call upon God by starting our worship service with the psalm, the psalm of the day from our lectionary. Actually, our lectionary text is taken from Psalm 104, verses 24 through 34, and verses 35, verse 35b. Those of you who are here with us, we encourage you to use your Red Pew Bibles. Those of you who are at home, we open, advi oh, encourage you to crack open your Bibles as well right now to Psalm 102, verses 24 through 34 and 35b. Hear these words. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In your wisdom, you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ships and Leviathan that you formed to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it up to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. And when you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works, who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing to praise my God while I have my being. May my meditations be pleasing to him, for I Rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Let all God's people praise the Lord. Ruling Elder Andrea Bradford. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone can hear me. I wish I could be there to see you and to commune with you, but thank God for technology and for this opportunity to commune even across the wires. I bring you greetings from Huntsville, Alabama, where it's a beautiful day, and I know you join with me in rejoicing in this beautiful day. And so we now continue our worship service this morning with our call to worship. We read it responsively. God plants seeds of hope in us and we all yield different gifts of the spirit. And I feel the fruits of the spirit stirring in my soul. What gifts of the first harvest do you bring to worship today? We all have different gifts to bring. We all bring our harvest of song, prayer, and praise to the altar of sacrifice. And in our diverse offerings, we give total honor and glory to God. Amen and amen. 
Our opening hymn is Arise, Your Light Has Come, which can be found in your blue hymnals in your pews at number 411. And as you receive your bulletins, you'll notice that there are lyric sheets or, or words for all of the songs if you wanted to sort of read along as well and sing out. Arise, your light has come. The Spirit's call obey. Show forth the glory of your Lord. And it will shine upon you today. God's power will make us strong. Mm -hmm. And so we rise up and we move into this time of prayer, which is so powerful. We have this privilege of prayer and we do not take it lightly. Mm -hmm. Power is in prayer. Let us begin our prayer time with our prayer of adoration, letting God know about how we appreciate all God does for us. Yes. It says every day with you is sweeter than the day before, loving God. True. If we had our way, we would we would have you give us our best day over and over and over. <laughs> oh, how we would miss the mystery of the next wonder you have planned for us to declare a miracle. Hmm. Yesterday's sunshine yields a different glory than what we may than what may await us with today's breezes. Mm -hmm. The surprise of tomorrow's dawn prepares us for your new mercies. Mm -hmm. The living water Jesus gives has a new freshness whenever we drink of it. The bread of life Christ prepares for us, fills us in new ways so that we are too full to hold on to all the things that hold us. You lovingly ask for all our tears and sadness so that we may be whole. The Holy Spirit you sent guides us through life in truth and in love. And we thank you. Amen. Amen. Hear the echoes of this prayer of adoration for what God can and will do with us and for us. The Spirit Song. Satisfy your soul. Oh, let him have the things that hold you and his spirit like a dove will descend upon your life and make.
sing the song with gladness as your hearts are filled with joy. Lift your hands in sweet surrender to his name. Give him all your years of pain And you'll enter into life in Jesus' name in Jesus, oh Jesus Come come in sweet surrender and so we go on with our time of prayer in that spirit of surrendering we've told God how much we adore all that God does for us we know that sometimes we step off that path that we know is prepared for us and in that step off we many times want to just say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And so now we have that opportunity in community to confess together. Confession is a prayerful opportunity to speak to God about how our eager desires to please God show us the folly of our claim to wise action. Hmm. And so we say this prayer together. Gracious God. God. We strive to be a unified people and believe we are doing your will. In our efforts to become one people, we seek to strip one another of the individuality with which you blessed us. We seek to convince others to believe as we do forgetting we are a people of multiple voices. We encourage others to be like us in our faith, in our living, in our thinking. And yet you made us each new and different. It was you who gave us different languages to speak. And you show us that our differences make up the many parts of you, O oh God. Release us from the spirit of our way or no way. Allow your spirit to gather us in your way where all are loved. May each of us reflect the many expressions of you. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. As we think about living in this world and we talk about diversity and inclusion, it's very hard sometimes to recognize that we are just struggling with diversity and inclusion and holding and seeing one another's gifts. In our silent confession, let us take a moment and remember those ways that we have yet to grow and learn to open our arms to all.
let us sing this hymn that is found in your blue hymnals at number 326. This sweet, gentle prayer, Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. Read and hear these words. Those are some powerful words. I offer that you look at those words once again in your moment of prayer. It is, in fact, a prayer. And God has told us that we walk on the path, we may step off, but we are forgiven. We have assurance of that forgiveness. Yes. The love of God embraces every person in the sea of humanity. And God's grace and mercy work to cleanse every heart, no matter the stain. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. And as Donnie McClurkin says, then may we be at a clean heart with those stains that have been washed away.
yes, purify me, create in me a clean heart so I may worship Thee. Cast me not away from Thy presence, please don't take your spirit from so that I may worship Thee. Create in me a clean heart and purify me, yes, purify me. Create in me a clean heart so I may worship Thee. Cast me Take your spirit from me and restore the joy of salvation so that I may worship thee, so that I may worship thee, so that I may worship thee, so that I may. Thank you for that, Donnie McClurkin. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, everyone, and welcome again to St. James Presbyterian Church here on the corner of 141st Street and St. Nicholas Avenue. We are so glad to be here worshiping today on Pentecost Sunday. Mm -hmm. I see some of you have worn your red, mm -hmm. and you are celebrating the fact that the fire came down today, which is a tradition in Presbyterianism and many other denominations to wear red on Pentecost Sunday. So we are grateful that you are here and we want to welcome you. It doesn't matter where you're from or how, what language you speak. All we know is that the language that God speaks to our heart is very clear and very palpable. Right? Mm -hmm. So we are grateful to be with one another here today and to be worshiping with one another. Yesterday, I spent the entire day at the uh, Jackie Robinson Park <laughs> where we had our multicultural festival. Um, St. James is now a sponsor of that, and as you, it's in your bulletin, you'll see that next week, um, uh, no, June 18th, the next version of the Multicultural Festival, which is much bigger, will be right outside these doors. So we are encouraging the entire community to come out. There was a woman there um, who, who was in the building that, that burned down in the Bronx, if you remember the Nigerian community, and she was yeah. saved and she lost her sister, and yet she was out singing and dancing to thank the community for supporting her through her tragedy and her struggle. I put that up on my, uh, on my Facebook page because it was that dancing from Mali, that Mali music was really got people moving and going. And you know, we all, there's so many people there that were singing from, uh, and dancing from Ireland, from Scotland, as we know, and China, and these Japanese no theater dancers as well, to celebrate the diversity of New York City. Yeah. Um, and, to, and to work with our police and our young people to say, we can be one together. Hey, Eamon, how are you? Yeah. Hi, Kathleen. How are you? It's good to see you. Welcome back. <laughs> So June 18th, starting at noon, we're gonna be right outside and I'll, make, I'll give you a flyer and some more information next week, but just show up. The kids from the schools, the two schools on our block now are going to be out there and, and they're gonna be opening their schools and their kids are gonna be part of it as well. So we get to finally be the anchor of this block that we've been dreaming of being for so long. So thanks be to God for that. So we look forward to that as well. I also just wanted to lift up, um, I had some conversations with a few people. Um, many of us know our, our con congregation member, Frank Stone of La Sala, who I believe is in Iowa right now, or who is in Iowa with his wife, Kathy, but he always comes in to worship. He hasn't been able to be with us for a couple of weeks, and he apologized for not answering your email, Anthony, <laughs> but his brother um, was diagnosed with a very, very far uh, fourth stage of, of, of cancer in the lungs. And so he's tending to that. And if you remember, Kathy's brother, Hud, also had a, a, an organ replacement. 
and there are some issues that are going on with that. So right now, at this particular time, they are accompanying HUD on his daily walk. So they can't be in worship with us. But they said, thank you for your prayers and ask that you would keep praying for them as well. So we are grateful. We're claiming God's blessings. Oscar's with us again, that enough said there. But we'll just leave that with that and praying for all of those. If, for example, you hear somebody or something that's someone that's not doing well or that they need prayers, please don't hesitate to email us at St. James of Verizon. St. James 409 at Verizon.net. I'll put this information up. You can mail us the information as well. And all of this is on the back of your bulletin as well. Uh, St. James 409 at Verizon.net. You can leave a message on our answering machine, 212-283-4541. Or you can just send us a card or a note at 409, 140, 409 West 141st Street and St. Nicholas Avenue, New York, New York, 10031-6400. You can also visit our website at www.stjamesharlemnyc.org where we accept donations and offerings through PayPal. But you can also go to our calendar feature and find out um, how to join us for our Bible studies. We have Bible studies most Monday nights and we do that through Zoom as well. And that information is on the calendar on our website so that you can join us or you can just give a call to the church. I did want to share with you that our saying for the day, I love it, I love it. It's from one of my favorite authors, it's from Zora Neale Hurston. Those that don't got it, can't show it. Those that got it, can't hide it. What a gift. Zora Neale Hurston gives us to think about that when you have the Holy Spirit, if you ain't got it, you can't show it. But if you've got that Holy Spirit, you can't hide it because you cannot hide the fact that God is blessing you right now, right now, right now. Even if it's just that God woke you up this morning and started you on your way, God is blessing you. Amen and amen. I also want to thank um, the St. James Presbyterian men for sponsoring a basketball team and the Harlem Up and Coming League, Hunk, which we've been supporting for a few years now. And um, we'll be hanging out in the park on many of these afternoons rooting for St. James teams um, to, to win the championship and to win their games in the league. And we're very happy about being a part of that and sharing our neighborhood. So we're all in the neighborhood. We're at the park, we're doing multicultural festivals, all is good in the, in the life of the church. Um, Bible study again, 6 to 7.30 p.m. That announcement is in your bulletin. Um, and you see our scriptures there. Next Sunday, I believe, is Trinity Sunday. So we go from celebrating the Holy Spirit to celebrating the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So that we will do. So if you didn't wear your red this week and you want to represent read next week for the Holy Spirit, feel free to do so. Please feel free to read the announcements in your bulletin. Um, um, the rest of them are, uh, we've been saying every week, you know, we appreciate your donations. We're still paying for our parapet wall, just a few more uh, dollars to take care of that. We're doing some wonderful work with our wonderful building. Um, I'm looking forward to the assessment, the architectural assessment that will be done for restoration, um, historical restoration. That's going to be exciting as well. Um, but we're also just looking forward to how God is going to be calling us to be in the future. So thanks be to God for that. And last but not least, I would like to thank ruling elder Andrea Bradford, for, mm -hmm. who is our liturgist for the day. I'd like to thank ruling elder Oscar Maxwell, who is our musician today. And I'd also like to thank ruling elder Chris Bozel, who is actually online um, sort of moderating our Zoom room. And Chris, I believe in the slide, um, the next slide, I, I still have you as elder or maybe resting elder. I gotta change that to make sure that it's ruling so that you know that. We also ask that you prepare your hearts and minds to have communion today. The table is prepared for all of us to come together in community and celebrate the Eucharist. Thanks be to God. Let me see. And so with that, Let's move forward. It's such a beautiful day. We don't want to be in here all day, right? It's such a beautiful day outside. We want to go out and celebrate God out there as well. So let us share our peace of Christ, ruling Elder Andrea Bradford, if you will.
Yes, yes, yes. Sharing love is is really, really important, especially now that we can be in each other's presence. We can sometimes see each other's smiles. And so we share this peace. The peace that Jesus leaves us is like none the world has ever known. May this peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to unpin myself so that you can see one another. And we will go to gallery view. Peace of Christ, everyone. I shall be. Peace. I shall be. Peace be with you. Hello, everybody. I shall be. Peace of Christ is that friendly time when, you know, it's so funny. The, the, the less people there are in the sanctuary, the longer the peace of Christ, because everybody starts having these wonderful conversations, and it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. So let us still our hearts and minds. Um, when we had our Bible study this week, um, we were studying the text, and we... We're looking at the Acts text and we're looking at this Genesis text that we're about to read. And one of the most amazing things sort of happened with us is that we recognize that these scriptures are perfect for such a time as this. So we're going to be meditating on these scriptures and thinking about what it means for our context today and putting a little couple of things in context and also getting a little bit of teaching done in our scripture to figure out how the Holy Spirit is calling us Today, So we'll pray that our meditations may be pleasing in God's sight. And I'm going to um, go back to ruling Elder Andrea Bradford, our liturgist for the day, to lead us through our prayer of illumination as I share the screen once more. Yes, yes, some beautiful scriptural passages today. And we lead our thoughts and hearts and minds into this time of hearing and reading of the word with our prayer of illumination. Please say it with me. May the spirit of truth, truth, truth guide our meditations as we read our scriptures. We too want to hear the word 
in the language of our own understanding. Be with us now, Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 As you see, we have four scriptures this morning. Our first reading is from the book of Genesis, the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 9. Genesis 11, 1 through 9. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as they migrated from east, they came upon a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves otherwise we shall be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth the lord came down to see the city and the tower which mortals had built and the lord said look they are one people and they have all one language and this is only the beginning of what they will do. Nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language there so that they will not understand one another's speech. Yeah. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore, it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there, the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. Oh, and our second reading is from Acts. Acts, the second chapter, verses 1 through 21. Acts 2, 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Hmm. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. Hmm. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? Hmm. But others sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. <laughs> but Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. Hmm. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. 
in the last days it will be God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams even upon my slaves both men and women in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy and I will show portents in the heaven above and signs in the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. Hmm. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hmm. And our epistle reading from Romans, the eighth chapter, verses 14 through 17. Romans 8, 14 through 17. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Mm. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. And our gospel reading from John, the 14th chapter, verses 8 through 17 and verses 25 through 27. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Mm -hmm. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Hmm. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I'm still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Whew, quite some scriptures. Quite some scriptures. We're going to try and figure out how we're going to talk about these in just a little bit. Um, we're going to hear Holy Spirit rain down, but and then we're going to hear about something very simply titled. You know, I usually write, try and think of these clever sermon titles, but I want this one to be open to your own interpretation, just like the Holy Spirit. When the Spirit speaks. When the Spirit speaks to you. But in a moment, we'll get to that. But I just want to have a moment with some of our young people and record this for our young people about sharing your superpower. And if you see on the screen here, there's a thing that says, the Holy, the Holy Ghost is my superpower. And it's a t-shirt company and a sweatshirt company called cultureinat.com. But I just wanted you to think about this whole notion of the, what is your superpower and how to share your superpower and why that is so important for the world that needs it. Well, first of all, we know that the, one of the most lucrative ways of making money for Hollywood now is to make a movie about what? Superheroes. Mm -hmm. We just finished watching this period, period, one of my favorite words. It means nosy. Watching that case about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, but it was all based on her, her superstardom as a superhero or trying to become one. We all know the Marvel comics and the DC comics. I was at the park yesterday, and young one young man said, "I," he said, "Mommy, I want my face painted." And she said, "What? what you want to? You want to be painted as Spider Man?" He said, "No, I am the Black Spider Man." <laughs> <laughs> And so he got his face painted as such, but he was claiming his superpower, right? But I say this to you, young people, because it's really important that when we think about what is this Holy Spirit, this Holy Ghost, many of us are not from a Pentecostal tradition. Many of us are not from a tradition or a Baptist tradition. I grew up with people being you know, inhabited by the Holy Spirit and dancing in the aisles and their wigs coming off like my <laughs> Aunt Joan. <laughs> and people speaking in other languages that we didn't understand and then someone else would interpret. But very often in Presbyterianism, we don't have that. So we go from the Holy Ghost, as we've said a couple of months ago, to the Holy Spirit. But there's still something powerful about understanding that when Jesus went back up to heaven, he said, I'm not leaving you alone. I have someone who is going to comfort you and who's going to be on your side. That's what an advocate is. An advocate is on your side to blow smoke and blow wind into the sails of your superpower. Because our superpower is based on that one thing inside of us that we just have to recognize the potential of what it is. And when we do that, there's no stopping us. So when Jesus went up to heaven and had that conversation with the Holy Spirit and said, okay, it's time for you to go do your thing now. I want you to go inside of all of my people who love me and let them know that they have a right to understand they are forgiven, they are loved, and they are divine. Hmm. That's your superpower. You are forgiven, you are loved, and you are divine. That is God's superpower that has been planted inside of you. What does this superpower do when you share it? Well, first of all, there's nobody that can put you down when you realize what your superpower is. Secondly, you get to mirror and show the rest of the world that we all have our superpower. And finally, as we see in all the movies, when we really share our superpower, we fight for justice, we do good things in the world, and we help this world be a better place by helping one another. Jesus said, follow my commandments. What Jesus really said was, my commandments are the key that will unlock your superpower. 
So let the Holy Spirit be your guide so that your superpower is always used for good. Sharing your superpower. The Holy Spirit has got your back. Most gracious and loving God, we thank you so much for the Holy Spirit and for the understanding that our superpowers come from you and that you want to bless us so that we can bless the world. We thank you that our young people are coming into their superpowers. We thank you that Shelby is manifesting something so powerful with veterans from World War II that she's hearing their voices and telling their stories. We are grateful that, that Amari and Maurice are finding their legs in these, basket, in these football tournaments and finding a way to stand up tall and know that you've got them as they're on that gridiron and you're doing great things with them with their schooling and academics as well. And we could go on and on and on about all the young people and all of their gifts. We just ask you to allow the Holy Spirit to strengthen their superpowers so that they can go and be the heroes and the sheroes that our world needs today. Hmm. And as Jesus said in the scriptures, if we pray it in his name, he will make it so. So we pray this in Jesus' name. Hmm. Amen. 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 Some superpowers. <laughs> so Jesus ascends to heaven. He tells all of his people, the disciples, everyone, I am sending an advocate for you. And as they watch him go and the tears come down their face, because they're going to miss Jesus. They're all waiting and waiting and waiting. Holy Spirit, can 
Hmm. When the Spirit speaks. When the Spirit speaks. Genesis. The sons of Noah. Let me get these names right. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. <laughs> Shem, Ham, and Japheth. All these three people who came out of that ark, these three sons, have now populated the entire earth with one people that speak all the same languages and they all are traveling in one pack, one posse as it were, through the wilderness, through the plains, understanding that the God that they serve is a powerful God, but also doing as we tend to do when we get comfortable with thinking that we are everything that God has desired and everything that God wants, they get a little full of themselves. <laughs> but they have this idea, and I'm not going to be too upset with these people because they do have a wonderful sort of thought behind it. They want to build a tower that reaches to the heavens. They want to build a tower that reaches to God. But we know what happened a couple of chapters beforehand, like eight chapters beforehand, when people thought that they could get the knowledge of God, they got kicked out of the Garden of Eden. <laughs> yeah. So God says, if they do this, then they will be able to do anything. But do you notice how it's one people, indivisible, united, <laughs> under God, all speaking the same language, having the same idea, same ideas, same political ideals, same religious ideals. You see what happens is that they end up offending the diverse plan of God's creation. God did not create so that everybody would be the same. <laughs> God did not create so that everyone would believe the same. God did not create so that everyone would love the same. We are all different aspects and manifestations of God's greatness and glory. We cannot contain God into what we think God should be. And yet one people, indivisible, under God, speaking one language, had this great idea that they would reach up to God and who knows what they would think and what they would say if they ever got there. <laughs> it's sort of like getting elected in our politics, in our system of politics. Uh -oh. You start out, you really want to do something for the community. And then you sort of have to get in line with the organization into which you've been elected. And then you sort of have to get in line with your political party. And then you sort of have to get in line with the larger body if you want to go to a higher office. Hmm. And then if you want to go to a higher office that maybe gets you outside of your local city mm -hmm. and you want to get to the capital, then you have to do a whole other bunch of ways of saying, oh, I got to understand the one language that we all speak. And then when you get to the national level, it's like, oh, wow, I really have to learn this language that we will all speak and we can't get anything done. <laughs> and it goes on and on and on. We mirror in our society what is happening in Babel. We are mirroring what is happening. We're all trying to figure out how to have one language to get our one point of view across without asking God, saying, so God, where is the diversity here that you want us to celebrate? Where are those people as we build higher and higher? Who are we to care for? Who are the bricks falling on as we build higher and higher, oh God? <laughs> Who is this mortar and bitumen raining upon? Because we all say that we want this one thing Friends, this is part of the issue, the political issue that one of our members of Bible study sort of made this beautiful analogy. When we start to see change happen in our world, 
there's always gonna be a group of people that don't want change to happen. We've done things this way. We're going to lose our power. We're going to lose our, what we identify as our place up on the higher chain. And then we're going to storm the Capitol. We want everybody to think like us. We want everybody to, to, to think according to the way that we think because we're scared of what we're going to lose and we're going to claim everything that, but it has no voice for anyone else. And God destroys that confusion. God says, go, disperse. I'm gonna let you all be confused until there's a time when you might be able to come together and recognize that in all of the languages that you're speaking, I'm the translator. <laughs> I'm the one who can speak to you so that you can hear all of your wishes and all of your needs identified and, and have all of your needs filled. God brought those people together and, and he confused them with their language. And they went off and settled in Africa. They settled. One of those sons' names of those generations was actually named Egypt. Where did he go? Egypt. You know, we have the Ashkenazi Jews who went up to Ashkenazi and Upper Sinai Peninsula. They went and they spread all throughout. When you see the maps of how they spread, it's amazing. And then, thousands of years later, the descendants of all of those people who had gone throughout the earth happened to be in Jerusalem. These are all Jewish people of different languages, of different culture, different acculturation for the place in which they have been born and where they live. And yet they come together for Pentecost. It's not the Holy Spirit that they're expecting. They're doing what they're supposed to do. It's five weeks after the first fruits. It's five weeks after, after, after Passover. When, when they have Passover, then they, then they celebrate the first planting of the seeds, and then they bring a sacrifice to the temple for first fruits. And then five weeks later, in, in summertime, when the, when the crops start to grow, they bring those first fruits of the harvest to the temple. And they're all there doing their duty. But the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit comes along, the Holy Spirit recognizes the power of what it means for you to understand this in your own language, for what it means for you to understand it in your own language. The Holy Spirit is not just a translator. It, it is a transfixer. Because this, what we need from the salvation of Jesus Christ is different for each of us. And yet, we think it's the same thing and that everyone's being saved and their salvation has to be the same as ours. No, that's not the case. I have my own trauma that Jesus is clearing me and cleaning me and making me whole. He's making me whole. He's making you whole. He's making every individual person on this screen, on YouTube, wherever we are, God's grace is sufficient for me. That's what that saying says, not us. God's grace is sufficient for me. So it's not until we are confused enough for so long when we finally lift our heads up to the sky and say, Holy Spirit, rain down. We will wait for you to rain down that we come to an understanding that in our diversity that God is glorified. In our diversity, God is glorified. When will we understand that in this world? When will we understand that in terms of government? When will we understand that in terms of housing? When will we understand that in terms of what everyone needs to feel whole in this world? That we don't withhold from one another. We don't withhold love. We don't withhold food. We don't withhold fair wages. This is... This is what we're talking about here, that, that this Holy Spirit is a spirit of truth. And what does that mean, spirit of truth? In the first century, 
what Jesus knows is that how his Jewish counterparts and how his Judean counterparts were studying texts and studying how God was working in them, that, that there was this whole idea of a spirit of truth and a spirit of falsehood. Hear me now. A spirit of truth and a spirit of falsehood. The spirit of falsehood will lead you down the roads of destruction, will lead you to treat others as you would not want to be treated. The spirit of falsehood tells us what we want to hear when we're trying to be racist, when we're trying to be sexist, when we're trying to be prejudiced. That's a spirit of falsehood. But the spirit of truth in the first century was what people were eager for. And the spirit of truth is the spirit of truth of God that leads us to good things, that leads us to see the joy and the beauty in one another and to see one another's needs as holy. Your needs are not a nuisance. Your needs are holy. And God supplies our needs because they are holy. And yet the world, the world with the spirit of falsehood looks at our need, our little old need, and calls us out for it and complains and criticizes us for not pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps. <laughs> my brothers and sisters, it's really so important, I believe, that we see the Holy Spirit's raining down on those people on Pentecost as the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth. That is not just meant for us to say, oh, you're right or you're wrong. The spirit of truth is meant to guide us in mm -hmm. our journey. That's what this spirit of truth is in the first century. It is a guide to lead us in our journey forward. When we embrace the Holy Spirit on Pentecost Sunday, we are asking for the spirit of truth to be what leads us in this world and not the spirit of falsehood. We've had enough of the spirit of falsehood. Ooh. The spirit of truth, not right or wrong, that's different. Right or wrong is different from truth. <laughs> That right or wrong is different from truth. Truth, you get behind. Mm -hmm. Right or wrong, you pick a side. <laughs> now you can tweet that. <laughs> because that is what the Holy Spirit is calling us to do. And the Holy Spirit called upon those people in that room to do the same thing. They are still under Roman oppression. They are still poor. They are still suffering. They are still living in a time where they are under so much injustice. And yet the Holy Spirit comes down and says, walk in your truth. Peter says it so beautifully because he understands that this is what Joel was talking about. Even in the midst of your adversity. I love the phrase that your old men will dream dreams and your young men will have visions. Do you see that that is a juxtaposition? Young people are supposed to dream. <sighs> Older people are supposed to have the vision of where things are supposed to be. We see the vision, but when you're young, have visions, and your old people can dream, that is a joyous space to be in. It means that, there is, that, that older folk are able to let go of the bonds that have held them, and they are able to dream again. And that young people are free enough and loved enough to have visions to hear how God is calling them to be in the world. That is what the spirit of truth does when the spirit of truth sits down in the pew of your church, Whew. sits down at that empty chair in your dining room table, sits down next to you on the subway, 
when I get into a, a backseat of an Uber and there's nobody in there with me, I say, welcome, Spirit of Truth. <laughs> Where are we going today? Three. Ah. This is some beautiful, beautiful ways of understanding from a bunch of people not speaking, speaking one language, thinking that they had it all together, to a bunch of people who were celebrating their diversity and getting behind the spirit of truth and understanding that God was bringing them to a place of joy and wholeness and fullness. Romans we read because I wanted us all to understand that the promise of God and the spirit of truth is given to us freely because we have been adopted. We are heirs, hmm. heirs of God. And the beautiful nuance about this is that we aren't heirs just to wait until the parent goes away and leaves us something. God has already made a down payment. That's really what that language is about. When you are an heir, you get a down payment to your inheritance. So the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of Truth is our down payment. It's a beautiful notion. So the Spirit of Truth. I like to think that that's why the Holy Spirit came down in a tongue to speak truth and to lead by truth. So when the Spirit speaks, Know that the Spirit speaks to you individually because the Spirit of truth has a journey for you to go on that is all yours. And it is the journey in which we glory with God, in which we are glorified through Jesus Christ. We with our spirit of truth, if we all get behind that, instead of on one side or the other, imagine the vision of God's people moving in the world, committed to the spirit of truth, and not giving the light of day to the spirit of falsehood. So let's start with ourselves. Start with our little corner of the world and see, let's just see what happens when we ask for the spirit of truth in the name of Jesus. I don't know what's gonna happen with you, but I can promise you this. Jesus said it himself, if you ask it in my name, <laughs> I will give it to you. Hmm. So pray on. <clears throat> Let the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide. Not just in your head, not just in your heart, but down in your soul. Hmm. Most gracious and loving God, we thank you for when the Spirit speaks. We thank you for quieting us today so that we may listen to when the Spirit speaks. Help us find those moments and those times when we are not sure if what is before us is the spirit of falsehood or the spirit of truth, but let us be able to discern how you are calling us to be. And if we step off the path, may we be gentle with one another. May we be gentle with one another when we ask, is it the spirit of truth or falsehood that you're talking about right now? And not judge. Because we want all of us in our diversity and our separate gifts of ministry, our separate gifts that you have given to us. We want everyone to feel full and whole. And we want to celebrate their gifts. Because every one of our gifts has the potential to be a ministry that saves someone's heart and soul. So guide us, Spirit of Truth. Rest with us, Holy Spirit. 
We know that you will be our comforter. But today we want to claim you as our advocate, working on our behalf, testifying on our behalf to the world that we are heirs and we belong to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Very good, Pastor. Wow, thank you. Very good. I was so into it, I lost my, my spot on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> and because they tried to get the whole world to go up to heaven, and then all of heaven came down, let's just celebrate that he's got the whole world in his hands. <laughs> He's got the whole world. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. Sun and moon. He's got the sun and the moon in his hand. He's got the sun and the moon in his hand. Sun and the moon, and in his hand, he's got the whole world in his wind and rain. He's got the wind and the rain. In his hands, he's got the wind and the rain. In his hand, he's got the wind and the rain. In his hand, he's got the whole world in. What about that little bitty baby? He's got the little bitty baby. In his hand, He's got the little bitty baby in his hands, the little bitty baby in his hands. He's got the whole world. He's got you and me. He's got you and me in his hands. He's got you and me in his hands. He's got you and me in his hands. He's, he's got the whole world. He's got the whole world. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world right in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Amen. 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 You like that? You like that? That was sweet. That was sweet. <laughs> And now is that time in our offering, in our, in our worship, where we take up our offering. Our plates are over here and our buckets are over here. So I'm going to ask that if you would avail yourselves to the offering plates, and that we contemplate what it means now that we give our gifts to God. Time, talent, treasure, presence. We are grateful also to those of you who are reading our bulletin and going online and donating to St. James through PayPal, through the website at www.stjamesharlemnyc.org. We're also grateful for those of you who mail your offerings in. We want to ask that you continue to believe and think how God is calling you to share your gifts with the community, with the world. I have this joy in my mind thinking about that door being open, kids walking by, people walking by and in and out, knowing that because there's an anchor and where God is represented that is on this corner, we are the oldest, oldest building on this block. We stand as a testament to what God has done. So we want to keep that mission going. And we do so with your tithes and your offerings. Gracious God, you see in our hearts, you know what we can give. We ask that you would help us in our hearts and our minds and our economics, that we will have faith of tomorrow and give and think about how you're calling us to be and to give in this world. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. 
Say amen and amen. And now we will prepare for our communion. After I have a sip of water. <laughs> thank Deacon Ray for assisting us with communion today. It's appreciated. Call you forward in just a moment. Uh, I love that poet Maya Angelou. She always has words that's perfect for everything, doesn't she? Yes, she does. Well, you know, she once said, <laughs> eating is so intimate. It's very sensual. When you invite someone to sit at your table and you want to cook for them, you're inviting a person into your life. Right, Sister Thelma? Ah. Jesus doesn't just invite us to the table, but into his life and into life everlasting. So we lay no claim to this table. It is Christ's. It is on his behalf that we extend the invitation to eat, drink, and feast at the table of life. All are we welcome. All are welcome. All are welcome in this place. Ruling Elder Andrea Bradford. Yes, indeed. And we have this great prayer of thanksgiving. It says, God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts unto the Lord. We lift them up hearts unto the Lord. Let us give God our thanks and our praise. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Day by blessed day, we witness the myriad ways you show your love for us. We imagine what it must have been like for you to take a piece of clay, shape it and mold it until it finally resembled your own image. And then you expressed your love for us in the most intimate of ways. You breathed the breath of life into us. We have given you a reason to smile from that moment, dear God. We also have brought you to anger. Mm. Joyfully, we enter into covenant with you that you would be our God and we would be your people. Yet time and time again, we turn away from you. Mm. We have worshiped other gods and have not followed the commandments you handed down to us. Yet every time we came to you to say, I'm sorry, your compassion yielded forgiveness and more love. <laughs> we still can't figure out just how you came to love us so, but for this love of yours that seems to grow with the ages, we say thank you. Holy, holy, holy. Though the shadows hide thee, though the eye of sinfulness thy glory may not see, only thou art holy, 
There is none beside thee, perfect in power and love and purity. In this cycle of I'm sorry and you are forgiven, we made excuses and claimed that we could forever be faithful if it had not been for you withdrawing your hand of grace and mercy. You decided that our excuses were simply examples of our selfishness in your wisdom. You showed us by your selflessness that grace and mercy were always ours. You gave us your own son. Jesus came to us in human form and who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited. He humbled himself enough to give his life for us on the cross. It was a painful, humiliating death, the son of man dying as a common criminal. The victory was yet to come, for on the third day after his death, he rose and lived again, conquering sin and death. No longer could your grace and mercy be obscured. For this we give you praise and honor and glory. Hmm. We join our ancestors and stand in the crowd of witnesses who are in awe of the mystery that is our faith. Christ, Christ died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And now I'm going to ask our ruling elder and deacon to come to the table with me as we pray for the Holy Spirit to bless your elements and our elements. You look just fine. <laughs> I'm going to ask if you would just extend your hand over while I read this prayer. Holy Spirit, Come to us now and bring us into the fullness of Christ so that we might sit at the table with Jesus, the welcome table. In the blessing of this cup and bread, Spirit, you take these simple gifts and transform them into bread of life and the cup of salvation. We also ask you to help us to come to the table full of love and forgiveness. Help us to wash our hearts just as we wash our hands of any impurities. Cleanse us of all anger and enmity. Fill us with love and compassion as we pray for ourselves, one another, and this world. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. You know, Harriet, on that night in which he was betrayed, sitting with his friends, even Judas was there at the table. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they had already eaten for the Passover meal. They were probably talking about nothing. <laughs> but to their surprise, Jesus reached out. And he grabbed the bread. And then he gave thanks to it, saying something like our friend Lab Shul would say, Something like that. Mm -hmm. ah. Then he broke it. It wasn't an easy break because Jesus gave it to all. And as he was saying these words, he realized what he was doing. He said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. He wants us all to do this in remembrance of him. And as they were passing around the bread area, he then got the cup, he filled it. And after giving thanks, saying something like this, Baruch Hata Adonai Elohim Ruach HaOlam, Ore Puri HaGafen, 
He said, this is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood. Those words, at a dinner table, my body, my <laughs> blood. Take and drink. And whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, do this in remembrance of me. You proclaim the saving death of the res resurrected Lord who is coming yet again. And so, all is prepared. All is ready. We have remembered Jesus. We have called the Holy Spirit. And now, we will share elements with our community. salvation for all. Hmm. Holy and loving God, we claim today that there is a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. It is the sweet spirit of the Holy Spirit in our hearts that we can see in the smiles and in the faces of one another. We are so grateful for this meal, for the Holy Spirit bringing us to the table with you, Jesus. We thank you for all who were able to do communion today. I know that communion is the basis of community and that community is the basis of your love 
being spread from one to the other. Bless you. Bless us all. Keep us all. blessed because you are heirs of God. You are blessed because the Holy Spirit came down on Pentecost. You are blessed because the spirit of truth is your guide. If you just get behind. And when you follow the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, you become a leader in a world help people turn away from the spirit of falsehood. May it be so in our lives, in our world, and in our spirits. Amen. 